Oh, hello, hello. Just going to try to adjust my video. I'm at work. I think you can probably tell that. And um, but I didn't want to miss our day today because we've missed so much. Welcome to Life on the Light Side. And if you haven't joined us before, we're here just to lighten up, even when there's challenging days that tend to get us down. Things like face masks and crazy news and stuff like that. It's a time to just settle in, have a visit, have yourself a cup of coffee, tea, whatever floats your boat, and uh, we can relax. I came, I'm coming from work today because uh, the time got crazy. It tends to do that. Oh, and a happy Monday, Cheryl. I am happy to see, I can see that comment. I love your comments, but I don't always see them. But today looks like the comments are working. So cheers to that. All right. Well, I did miss you. You know, it's that Friday got too busy. We had so many people checking in. I'm, I'm thinking about the possibility of changing this to instead of being an afternoon thing, to being a morning thing, like a morning breakfast club thing. And uh, because that's before it gets too busy here. Uh, you know, it's the way it's gonna be for the next six months. And it's still cold. Does anybody know what happened to spring? Because I don't know. <laughs> it's cold and windy here in Connecticut. And uh, we just had some folks who came camping. Uh, they were went up to set up their tent today. And uh, it was blowing so hard. Uh, one of their tent stakes broke. And so they said, we'll just hang out for the day. And then we're going to go home. There's... They're not going to try to sleep in a broken tent. So that is unfortunate. So let's start where we like to start. And by the way, again, if this is your first time and you enjoy our visit today, I do invite you to uh, go on over to YouTube and type in Life on the Light Side. That's L-I-T-E side. Alicia Leslie. And you can see all the videos we've done. So for now, settle in. Let go of anything that might be bothering you. Hmm, it's almost like a different kind of meditation. Now you may hear the phone ringing, you may hear some talking because downstairs business continues. This is what they call the loft here at the campground and it's upstairs from the office and it's where you can um, get books uh, or you can um, play games, do puzzles and stuff like that. It's really helpful because we did have more folks that were here this weekend when it was equally cold and uh, the folks came in to play games and um, they were very happy to have a warm place to have some fun regardless of the fact that it was cold and rainy outside. All righty, well, today is, we start with the National Day calendar as we do. It is National Pretzel Day. Now, generally speaking, I'm not a big pretzel fan. There is one kind of pretzel that I can't get enough of, and that's, I think it's called Snyder's Honey Mustard, Dijon Honey Mustard, something like that. Oh my goodness, I'm salivating just thinking about them. Haven't had any in years, because if I sit down and start, I'll finish the whole bag. They are really tasty. But they pretzels have been around for a long time, and there's a lot of stories around about whatever came about to make pretzels. And one of the stories said that some monks designed them and made them so that little twist in the middle is like hands crossed in prayer. And uh, uh, and I think that that'd be a cute thing. It was a special treat for kids for using their, uh, for learning their prayers and everything. And then they would give them these little treats and uh, I don't think I made note of the other ones, but you can find that on 
hashtag national day calendar. Um, they said that in Philadelphia, the people in Philadelphia eat 12 times more than the any other state, any other place in the United States, 12 times more uh, pretzels, which is really interesting. I have made pretzels before, and I have a great recipe for soft pretzels. And they're kind of like bagels where you boil them before you bake them. So if you can figure out how to do that little twist in the pretzel that makes it a pretzel, <laughs> um, you want to make it real tight because if not, you're going to wind up with these pretzels that are going, um, but you put a little kosher salt on when they come out of the oven and it will before they go in the oven and they are yummy. So that is one kind of pretzel I absolutely do like and you dip them in mustard. Very, very good. Okay, it is National Kids and Pets Day. This to me is very important that it's not just what people think it is. Kids and pets naturally bond. And yet because they don't always see the pets as animals, if you bring up a child from a very early age with a pet, then they know how to handle them and how to handle them safely and to uh, take good care of them. So it's also a great way to teach responsibility. So I know though, all the kids, oh, can we have a please dog? Can we please have a dog? Can we please have a dog? Yeah, please, 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 please have a dog. And we'll walk it, we'll feed it, we'll do it all. And then on the first cold rainy day when that dog needs to go out, <laughs> And they don't feel like going out all of a sudden. Guess who's taking the dog out? Make them stick to their word. If they said, we want a dog, then you say, you got to go out in the golden rain to walk them when they need their walk. Again, your kids, until they learn how to be with animals, really got to supervise them. And when you get them an animal, I would recommend looking if you're not getting like a dog or a cat, and I recommend cats because they require so little care. And uh, if you treat them right, they're very, very loving and, and they're good companions. I know, because we'll talk about Miss Tish later. Um, but anyhow, um, don't get them like, I think a hamster has a lifespan of two years. So you barely get them in and get them accustomed and then it's gone and then you got to explain the deck thing, which you're going to have to explain one day anyway. But um, to me, hamsters, not a good idea. Think long and hard before you put a kid and a pet together. Think long and hard about the type of pet and the kind of life that the, the pet will have and not just the child and the kind of companions they'll be able to be. You know, we've always had pets in our house and we've always had dogs and cats. Well, then my sister's got horses. When she was little, she had a rabbit and the rabbit's uh, name was Nine because she got nine on her ninth birthday. So that was pretty funny. Um, okay, well, let's just... Uh, Think about our kids and their pets, and uh, don't just bring a, a pet on somebody. You know, make sure the kid wants the pet. We, I had a very good pet. I was given to me for my 13th birthday by my Uncle Andy, and my poor mom had no clue. <laughs> and my uncle shows up with this little, uh, little dog for me. It was a corgi, and to this day, I've got a soft spot for corgis but a softer spot for cats because they're so easy to take care of. All right. It is also, speaking of animals, it is National Audubon Day. So it's a great day to think about the birds, the blessings they are to us. Do a little bird watching. Take your kids out bird watching. Get a hummingbird feeder. It's almost time. And those hummers will be out there just 
flitting around. Oh, sometimes they're nasty little birds. So I'll tell you something. You have a bird feeder with like four openings. So you can have four little, you know, humming birds just sipping out of those little red things that look like flowers. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> very often they're very uh, territorial. So, you know, this one bird's going to take over the whole feeder, but they go back and forth all day and uh, they are amazing to to watch. So think about that with the hummingbirds and uh, go and check out other kinds of birds. Maybe you'll want to get a birdhouse. A birdhouse is a great thing to have, and this is a great time to get them. Matter of fact, we have one of our friends' uh, uncle, I think, makes birdhouses. So we have some homemade birdhouses down here at the in the campground. So, um, and uh, Audubon Day is named for uh, John James Audubon, who developed the Audubon Society. And uh, he was born in 1785. So people were watching birds and thinking about birds for a long time. And my brother, actually, he did it when he was younger. I don't know if he still does it. Um, he carves birds. Yeah. He went to school for art and he carves birds. Fascinating. It is also National Richter Scale Day. Ooh, you know what that is? That's when everything shakes and you see how hard it shaked by checking the Richter scale. That's what determines the uh, level of an earthquake. Now, I've probably shared this before, but it's always worth hearing again because someone that hasn't heard it might heard it, might hear it. Um, when I lived in California, earthquakes were um, not uncommon at all. And so you kind of learn to roll with it. And you learn things like to which way the plates, you know, the earthquakes are caused by plates of the earth that are pushing against each other. And when the pressure gets sufficient, it goes boom like that. And that's what an earthquake is. And for a while, when I lived in California, I took classes so I could teach classes on earthquake preparedness. And I did teach some classes, in fact, which was very good. My first earthquake experience, I was in Huntington Beach I had been sent out there by uh, the company I worked for, Avon Cosmetics, and I was a district sales manager and they sent me out there for training. And uh, at that time I was in the Catholic church and I never flew without my prayer beads, my, well, rosary beads at that time. Now I, I make prayer beads, so I take my prayer beads when I go away. But I had, uh, um, was laying in bed and we were just getting ready to sleep and all of a sudden there was a, and I just, my hand just slipped up to the table by the side of the bed in the motel and grabbed the little prayer beads and pulled them back under the covers. And then my roommate says, was that an earthquake? I said, I think so. That was my first earthquake. And then a number of years later, uh, when I lived in California, uh, I had way, very, very, very long hair. And I was teaching myself to French braid. And I remember I was standing uh, in the bathroom, you know, in front of the mirror, and I'm doing the braid in the back of my hair. And all of a sudden the earthquake happens. And I just, you know, move over and put my back against the hinge of the door to make sure it wouldn't slam shut or anything and just continued my braiding. That's what happens when you get used to earthquakes. But not that you want to, because you never know how big one's going to be. Where I live in Moodis, we do live on, uh, on a fault line. A fault line is the line between the two plates. And uh, we haven't, we've had little rumbles, but nothing major. But we do have right here in Moodis a phenomenon called the Moodis noises. And the Moodis noises are booms or things where everything just shakes real quick, just like that, boom. And uh, that is, there's a lot of caves around here and stuff, and we do live on a fault line. But some people say that when the earth goes boom, that it is the evil spirit of Mama. 
that the Native Americans spoke about. And so as they say, oh, Habamak is out and doing his stuff. And if you ever come to the campground to camp, I'll probably come by your campsite and tell you a story that who knows, Obama might be in that story because he shows up in a lot of them. All right, so now we know all about earthquakes and the Richter scale. And it is also a very special day today. It is National Horse Rescue Day. And you know, I've been, Tishy's been going to the vet a bit lately. And we went the other day and come to find out our, our vet has a, like a horse rescue thing going on. And it's not only horse rescue, but they're working toward developing horse therapy. So horse therapy is for people who have different kinds of uh, emotional or mental conditions that they find that caring for and being around the horses is very healing. So that's wonderful. Um, it is Dissertation Day, National Dissertation Day. We got a bunch of them today. It is National Dissertation Day, and a dissertation is bigger than an essay. It's a big thesis paper that someone has to complete in order to get a doctorate degree. They used to be very, uh, very uh, limited, like the philosophy, but now they go into all different uh, categories that someone has to do if they are in a uh, that type of mastery program. And I think we have to like, you know, sometimes we think that it's easy for people to get where they got and get the paychecks they get for the work that they do. And these are the things we want to remember, remember is doing a, a dissertation and getting passed through it and everything is no small deal. It's very long, it's very detailed, and it really is showing I know my stuff. So just that we may see our physician driving around in a fancy car and say, Whoa. well, remember, he worked a lot for that. And when we were doing other things, they were studying, he or she, did I just say he? Okay, um, and the last one for today is it is National South Dakota Day. Now, what's in South Dakota? Mount Rushmore. That's it. Most, most people, if you know about South Dakota, you say, oh, that's where Mount Rushmore is. But it's a very fascinating place to live. It's, you go through the Badlands, and, and uh, which is astounding to think of pioneers crossing there. We have no idea how, how much easier we have it than the pioneers did. The pioneers were out there looking for a better life. They found it, and now we had it gifted to us. Yes, we work hard for our living, but we have so many choices and so many things we can do, and uh, we really need to, to think about that. Um, other things, we I went to Mount Rushmore with my, uh, was the year after my dad passed away, and so my sister and her husband wanted to take my mom to Mount Rushmore. They want to take her on a little trip to kind of give her a little, what? Lightening up in her life. And they invited me to go along and I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> say the word, I'm there. And I'm packed and standing at my door waiting for that big old RV to come pick me up. Well, we had a grand time. We went and got my mom in Texas and then we came up, uh, we went to Custer's place and that's a hero that really wasn't much of a hero, but we're not gonna talk about that today. And we went to the Badlands and we went to Rushmore and we had such an adventure. You know, one of the things, if you wanna keep your adventures light is to pay attention. And I don't know how we wound up on this road, but we wound up on a very twisty road. It literally goes like that, okay? And what we didn't know is that at the end of it, you go through this, this tunnel, it's a square, it's a box thing like that, that's carved into the mountain. We have pictures of the RV with maybe, maybe three or four inches 
on every side in the top. Before we went in, my brother-in-law had to lower the air in the tires so that it could be down low enough and slide through that. I don't recall seeing a warning that said, no RVs. Um, surely it was there because I don't know how we made it through that tunnel. Great pictures, great adventure. We also saw, and, um, Golly, I can I cannot believe it. I forgot his name. There is um, a, cat, a statue of an, an Indian, Native American, whatever. Gosh, Cheryl, you know these things. Type that in there and give me the answer so I can give it to the folks. Uh, back on it. Anyway, it's so far it's been they've been working on it for like over fifty years. And just the very, very front part of it is visible. Uh, so they're going to be working on it for uh, at least another 40 years or way more. And it's all being done so far. Many people are working on it, but it is um, the people from the family of the man who designed it are still working on it. So that was pretty interesting. And when I was out there, we were getting ready to go, and I picked up a book uh, at Mount Rushmore. And uh, some of you may have seen, I posted on Facebook today, if I loaned you my copy of Land of the Burnt Side, would you please get it back to me? I, I just can't believe it. I should keep a, you know, I should keep a log for all the books I've gotten rid of. A few that I really like, I loaned out and never got back, and that is a Land of the Burnt Side. It's a story about two sisters just two women, just sisters. They weren't like brawny, you know, rough and tumble sisters. Just two women who decided to go seek their fortune and be homesteaders uh, out in the West. And they wound up in uh, Presho, South Dakota. And they actually, these two women uh, started a grocery store and a post office. So, you know, in those days, sometimes women could only get rights if they moved away from the cities and towns and into the wild. Great stories in that book about the time they were, they were swarmed by flies. One time they had rattlesnakes living underneath their places. Story after story. And uh, so, so exciting to have been in the town that they founded. It's very exciting. So that is... Oh, and we had a wonderful thing out there called fry bread. And the um, the native uh, tribes that live there, will they sell it on the side of the road. And I'm so sad that when I did my trip uh, four years ago out on uh, to do my Route 66 journey, I was going through, I think it was Arizona, and I saw a sign for fry bread. And a part of me said, I should pull off and get some. And then I said, well, I'm sure there's going to be another one down the road. There wasn't. Sometimes you got to take advantage of that. <laughs> got to lighten up from knowing I missed my fry bread. I guess on the good side, that <laughs> the way I ate it, you know, it's like fried. So it's very, very greasy. And I had mine with mashed potatoes on top because I was a vegetarian. It was, oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, oh, Cheryl says, I love fry bread. Yeah, out here we, a crazy horse. Yes, that was it, the statue of crazy horse. How crazy of me that I couldn't remember that. One would think we're practically related. Okay. Oh, so that was just a great adventure. And um, let me see, I think Cheryl's words are being hidden here because she said she loves fry bread. And she, I said I had it in California. Hmm, that was interesting. Very, very cool. Okay, so update on Tishy. She is doing okay. We took her to the vet on Saturday, and he gave us a second demonstration on how to give her fluids. Ooh, and my sister, bless her precious heart, my sister Valerie said, she would be uh, willing, to, I would say happy, she would be willing to help with that. 
So when I'm done here, when we leave the office today, we're going to go up to my place and we're going to give Tishy her periods. And uh, I am delighted to say that she has been eating. I bought her a bunch of single serve food. So it's only one packet, you know, one meal. Because every time I open up a can of cap, it could be the best stuff on the market. Open up the can. She wants the first serving. Now, I'm not going to, you know, we remember that this cat food that I am getting her now that is that she eats is costs for one packet more than what it costs for two cans of food that I would give her over a three day period. So, but she's eating it. No, she won't. She wait. I told you. When we went to the vet, uh, she weighs four pounds and six ounces. She's tiny. It's not just that she's skinny, skinny. She's tiny, and she was getting skinny. So we're hoping this will put a little bit, little bit, and her fur is looking good. So that is so precious that um, she's doing better. And I'm very grateful that although I'm really, really nervous about giving her the the um fluids i'm very very grateful that my sister will help me with it and um if i have to do it myself one day i'm just gonna have to do it myself one day and it seems to me like her coat is is uh is silkier so i'm thinking this is an all over good thing so we'll pray that while we're praying that sadly my niece had to uh, let go of her dog today. So I had to cross over the Rainbow Bridge. And we pray knowing that eternal life is not a gift that is ours alone. That all God's creation, everything is energy. And don't you know that we'll have our pets with us always. So that's a good thing. And I wanted to share one more thing. <coughs> It's about lightening up and what do we need to be happy? He says, some people say, well, I'll be happy when I get married. I'll be happy when COVID's over. I'll be happy uh, when my kids are grown up. I'll be happy when I have some money in the bank. You know, we all have these things we say, well, I'll be happy when. Well, how about if we just decide to be happy? You can be happy wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and generally whatever's going on in your life. It, I know we do get knocked down a lot, but when we get knocked down, it's like anything else. We have to take a little bit of time to heal and then get back up and get happy again. Um, so I want to tell you about a happy moment I had this past weekend. Uh, I was getting ready the newsletter. Some of you might have seen some of the pictures I posted. Some of the pictures I posted by accident. I didn't know that they were posted, posted, because I wanted to just save them for the newsletter and send them to myself, you know, private. And uh, But some of them got released anyway. But what it is, is we made campfire loaded potato skins. I gotta tell you, first of all, I think I've said it before, I love to cook. I love to cook. There's something about cooking that soothes my soul and makes me feel good. And um, so, and I love to do the things we do for the newsletter. So this idea came to me one day to do these you know, fire loaded potato skins. I didn't know how it was gonna work, but I also had this little basket cooker thing from the campground. I said, well, put them in there, flip them over, it ought to work. And so we made them. And not only did they come out good, they came out fantastic. And so after they were made, and my sister and I always have a good time making this stuff because we're getting the ingredients ready, getting them out, experimenting, looking at it, seeing, is this one going to have to go in the trash? <laughs> We've had a few of those. But they came out so great. And after they were cooked, 
uh, we had Laura come over and uh, we were proud to find Don. He made it, but it was after a while. But Laura, who, who is our friend who works here and uh, started working here, became friend, almost family, I would say. And, uh, and Valerie and I all sat around our my picnic table. Oh, I love it when I have my picnic table and I have guests come and sit there. I'm a real entertainer. I just love to have company. So anyway, uh, we had our potato skins, a little glass of wine, little checkered tablecloth. You'll see it in the newsletter. I post it, you know, all the time. So it was just so wonderful. Here was this moment. There was no big expense involved. There was no ton of work involved. To a lot of people, it would have looked like an everyday thing. But there's beauty and light and happiness in everyday things. So if something is keeping you down today, I invite you to let it go, to lighten up, and to find some real pleasure in an everyday thing. Maybe a phone call, write a letter to a friend that you haven't seen in a long time. So think on these things. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yeah, no tissue today because I'm at work and she can't come here because she'd wander off. <laughs> God bless you good. Have a good day. Bye-bye.